Fox News recently brought on a guest named Douglas Murray, and they're going to have a conversation about more and more people not wanting to have children. Now, the poll that they cite doesn't specifically say that it's because of climate change, but they assume that the reason why less people want to have children is because of climate change. I think it's probably a number of reasons. Climate change definitely one of those factors that is making people less likely to want to have children. But still, the conversation that they had here is going to be very, very unintelligent, as you're going to see. So let's listen to them. And then when we come back, I will explain to you why what they're saying is stupid. All right, a growing number of Americans never plan on having kids. A recent survey revealing 44% of childless adults plan to stay that way. That's up 37% in 2018. And in a brand new op-ed, our next guest argues, quote, climate change extremists are to blame for this, for scaring them out of having children. Uh, that man joins us now, Douglas Murray. Douglas, how are they related? Well, the, the, the two recent polls showed, first of all, uh, unbelievable levels of climate anxiety among young people. Uh, two thirds, roughly, are saying that they, on a daily basis, are afraid of the future. And then you have this, this study that shows the, what, what, what it says will be the, the most precipitous fall off in reproduction. Uh, that's been recorded from people saying they, they just don't want to have children. Now, we have very prominent figures in America who have led the way on this. Uh, Congresswoman uh, AOC has said, you know, uh, we've got to discuss whether it's ethically right to have children given the climate crisis. Pop stars like Miley Cyrus have said, I'm not reproducing until the marine situation is, is, is exactly right. I don't know what's going to happen when the fishermen are going to come to Miley Cyrus and say it's OK out there again, Miley. Right. Uh, but but these, these, these people are listened to. And crucially, the politicians, the politicians across the Western world are saying, you know, they used to say you've got 24 months or a few years. You know, the other week, Boris Johnson said they've got one minute to save the planet. This isn't informing people. It's scaremongering. It's causing young people, as we see, Anxiety starts very early and it's, it's pretty pervasive through well, the Western society. You know, it was pointed out, too, uh, that we've had these alarmists for quite a, some time. Yeah. Prince Charles, by the way, at that same Glasgow conf conference says we have 18 months. Yeah, he, 18 he, months to save the world. <laughs> He's been saying 18 months for about 18 years. Right. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't change his clock or his watch. It also, in, in 2004, a major UK newspaper said civilization will be destroyed by 2021. So we, and we only have three weeks to live. Yeah, you know, the, the problem of all of this is when, when you're an adult like us, we, we've seen this happen. Most of the American public or, you know, the, uh, middle aged say, we, we've seen this going on for a long time. If you're young, it's quite possible you believe this. And the stats show that they do. They actually believe that they're not going to grow old. They actually believe that if they brought children into the world, those children will burn to death. They've got the, the strange medieval-like patron saint uh, Greta Thunberg telling them the same things like this. It's sort of prophetess of doom. Uh, and, and, and if you're young and you, and you believe this, I'm sorry, you know, the adults need to change the narrative. The, the adults need to say, look, you know, there are issues with carbon emissions, but we can solve them. Uh, it, there are issues uh, with this, but, you know, if you want to take it to somebody, take it to China that's still building hundreds of coal-fired fuel plants every year. You know, but, but, but that we're human beings. We've got ingenuity. We're not, we're, we're not fated, you know, and I, I said in that, in, I quoted in that piece in the Telegraph, very moving sermon that C.S. Lewis gave in Oxford in uh, the uh, autumn of 1939. And he said then, he said, if we human beings had waited for the optimal conditions to be in place, we would never have done anything. Right. As, as C.S. Lewis said, in 1939, human life was always lived on the edge of a precipice. Now, as it happens, we're not living on the edge of a precipice at the moment. We're living in the luckiest time in history. But it's time we communicate that to young people. Otherwise... Literally, there will be no future. In 1989, the UN Environmental Program said we had three years to save the planet. Maybe pointing yeah. out some of these alarmists, how they fell flat on their face and should be embarrassed by their statements, would help everybody. That would probably Absolutely. help. Douglas, uh, Douglas, thanks so much for coming in, expanding on your column. Great it's to great see pleasure. you. Notice how him saying that we'll, quote, have no future because less and less people are having children. That, in particular doesn't qualify as scaremongering. But people just worried about the habitability of our planet long term, they're the ones who are scaremongering. If you pretend as if we're going to go extinct because less people are wanting to have kids, that's fine. You could you could scaremonger about that. Climate change, mm, you're unreasonable. It's just, it's incredibly hacky and stupid. And honestly, the first thing that I could think about as a solution if they're truly, you know, worried about climate scaremongers 
and how this affects people wanting to have children is to fix the fucking issue. Rather than using that platform to lie about climate change and continuously moving the goalpost, I mean, we went from it doesn't exist to, oh, well, climate is always changing. You keep moving the goalpost, but I mean, rather than actually being mad at people for being fearful of climate change, stop lying about climate change and instruct people in your own party the party that you do propaganda for to fix the fucking issue. It's just, I mean, if you truly think it's that big of a deal, then the solution is take care of climate change and maybe more people will want to have kids. Now, Douglas Murray talks about how it's because of scaremongers like AOC and celebrities like Miley Cyrus, but I don't think that it's unreasonable to not want to have kids because you don't know what their future is going to look like. Look, I don't know what the future is going to have in store. The problem is that we don't know, and it looks grim. It looks bleak. Even if climate change wasn't an issue, the rise of fascism, the decline of democracy in the United States and around the world, that in and of itself might kind of deter people. But climate change is an issue that I think about. I mean, I have a nephew who's seven, another nephew who's three. You know, I have nieces who are two and, and one. And I think... What is the world going to look like by the time they're old, when they're in their 70s and 80s, if they're lucky enough to live to be that long? What's the world going to look like? Is there going to be wars over water by that time? I think probably by the time we're older, we're going to see wars over water. But what is the world going to look like? Will we see mass migration by that time? I just, we don't know. And that uncertainty, I think that that is logical to deduce that maybe I don't want to bring a kid into this world if it's going to suffer. So it's not like this is really an unfounded fear. Again, it's not just climate change that is driving this trend. I also think it's the economic situation. I mean, millennials and Gen Zs, they can't buy cars. They can't buy homes. They're, uh, you know, strapped with student debt. The economy doesn't work for them as it did for their, you know, parents' generation and grandparents' generation. So there's a, there's a lot of things driving this trend. But Fox News is going to just basically shit on people because they are rightfully concerned with climate change. And that's that's just wrong. You're part of the problem. You're part of the reason why we're not taking action to stop climate change because this network lies repeatedly and Douglas Murray lies as well. Now, Brian Kilmeade cited a 2004 UK newspaper that supposedly said that, you know, uh, civilization would be destroyed by 2020. Okay, first of all, I don't know which unnamed newspaper you're talking about are we talking about the daily mail because not necessarily the most credible are we talking about a tabloid even if this was a reputable organization even if it was the guardian still because one person wrote an article that was hyperbolic and sensationalist that disproves all of climate change i just i don't think that he realizes how this doesn't actually prove his point. Kilmead also said that in 1989, UNEP said that we had three years to save the planet. Now, in particular, I think I know what quote he's talking about. Now, he's bungling the quote, first of all. He, he's misrepresenting that quote. The quote that he's referring to, it doesn't say that they have three years to save the planet, if I'm thinking of the correct one. It says that we have to fix climate change by 2020 if we want to stop it from being irreversible, if we want to stabilize the climate and uh, in particular, one person at UNEP said in 1989, entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if the global warming trend is not reversed by the year 2000. So if this is the quote that he's referring to, then, I mean, I don't think that that's that far off for the time, right? Saying that it's really important that we get this under control by 2000 so it's not irreversible. I don't think that that's that far off. I mean, it's to the point where it may already be irreversible. I think that's yet to be determined. But either way, climate change is already here. It's not some distant thing. It's already happening. And conservatives like to point to older articles and studies about climate change and pretend as if they've been disproven. Oh, well, they, they predicted all of this damage. But the problem is that climate change is causing damage. It's causing ocean acidification. It's causing desertification. It's causing the death of coral reefs. Species are going extinct. It's already here. Talk to people who live in island nations about how real climate change is, and they can tell you. So, you know, even if some of these articles may be hyperbolic and sensationalist, that doesn't disprove the severity of climate change. They're so disingenuous. Notice how they have to lie 
in order to get their point across. And when they're not just outright lying, then they deflect. They'll say, what about China? What about this? What about that? What about, you know, people who talk about climate change, but then fly in airplanes? Now, Douglas Murray said they actually believe they're not going to grow old. They actually believe that if they brought children into the world, those children would burn to death. Talk about a fucking straw man. Look, I don't know that people my age and Gen Z are going to be able to grow old and not see hell, right? I don't know what to expect. It's the uncertainty that really worries me. But I don't think that it's hyperbolic to worry about whether or not current young generations are going to die because of climate-related issues. And no, we're not thinking that the planet is going to warm so much that we literally burn. Like, that's, that's fucking stupid. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about global destabilization because of anthropogenic climate change. We're talking about food shortages, wars, mass migration, rising fascism in response to mass migration. I mean, we're talking about a ton of different things that is all going to directly and indirectly impact every single aspect of our lives. It's not just that the weather is going to be different. That's not what climate change is. I mean, sure, we'll see more extreme weather patterns, but it's a huge, huge system of things that's all interconnected. So we don't know. And that uncertainty is driving this trend that you claim to be concerned with. So if you want to reverse the trend and you want more people to have children, take climate change seriously. Stop deflecting. Stop saying, oh, well, what about China? Take it seriously. Call out the fossil fuel giants. Call out the 100 corporations that are responsible for the lion's share of global greenhouse gas emissions. Call out both parties who are refusing to act. Call out Republicans for their denial. Maybe give us some sense that you care about the future of our planet. And then people might have a little bit more of an assurance that, yeah, it's, it's okay to bring more people into this world. But until then, don't be surprised if this trend continues in the direction that it's headed in, because I don't blame people. I wouldn't want to have kids. Uh, I don't think that anyone who uh, is worried about climate change is wrong to think that they shouldn't have kids because they don't know what type of world their kid will grow up in. I think that that's just logical. Why would anyone knowingly bring someone into the world if they're going to suffer and feel pain? Why do that? So, I mean, if you care, fix climate change, or at least try to. Otherwise, like, don't condemn the people who care as scaremongers. You're the scaremongers. In response to a Green New Deal, it's Fox News that lies. And they're the ones who are hyperbolic about how AOC wants to ban farting cows and ban airplane travel. You're the ones who are hyperbolic. You're the liars. So stop, and maybe more people will feel comfortable about the prospect of having kids.